I have the distinct pleasure of being invited to introduce women from our community. My name is Laura. I'm a descendant of the Blackfeet and Seneca Nations. I grew up in this neighborhood when it was a black neighborhood, just right up here on Edison. My family was redlined here, and now there's no way that we could even buy that house. That's real, it's real. The native community has lived in North Portland that started when Vanport flooded. So many tribes came to Portland to work in the, in the shipyards and to live in Vanport. It was one of the leading reasons why we have so much tribal diversity. We have over 360 tribes represented in this beautiful city. I'm here to represent the indigenous group and introduce these women to speak, but I wanna share with you the reason that our group decided that this would be women's voices is the men saying, this is a women's time. This is a woman's time to be in power and to be in leadership. And we will follow and we will uplift, we will protect, we will provide. So I wanna give a shout out to the, the men from our group because you all, we couldn't do this without you. We're all together. That's a true testament of our native culture, of our indigenous culture. And remember that every single one of you originates from indigenous people. We're here as that reminder, and we're here to stand in solidarity with Black Lives Matter and with our black brothers and sisters. With that, I'm gonna step aside and let our women share their words with you. Black Lives Matter, Black Trans Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter. This is not a land acknowledgement. This is a moment to tell truth tell and story tell our liberation into reality. We choose this moment to relearn names, textbooks forgot to mention in their pages. Insulting our knowledge with two paragraphs about our vast cultured societies here since time immoral. We are here to disrupt colonial narratives that have separated our stories, black and indigenous stories. Historical amnesia absolves the accountability of those who have rewritten our history for their own benefit. Being comfortable with being uncomfortable involves our radical acceptance and alignment with truth. Black mothers matter. Black mothers and native mothers have had their babies stolen from their arms. Black women and native women have been raped by our oppressors. Black and native women continue to be harmed by racist institutions to this day. Stolen lives on stolen lands. And still, black mothers create black lives worth living and loving. Brilliant, beautiful, Powerful, excellent. Black Lives Matter, Black Trans Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter. As Black and Native women and birthing persons, we are uplifted and sacred. As water carriers and lifeways between generations, we are mothers, aunties, grandmothers, sisters. Creator made us the bringers of life. We carry two spirits at one time, water in our bodies that bring life and water in our lands that nourish lives. Water is life. Our Afro-Indigenous mothers, sisters, aunties, grandmothers, and children are confirmation of our binding relations to each other and the lands we live on. We are carriers of sacred ancestral knowledge, strength, and resilience from both wisdom lineages. What inspires us is our ability to always rise up and create revolutionary change. This is our moment to be ancestors who remembered our stories and full-heartedly aspire to continually pray for the health and help for our relatives and the relation to the land. It is a sacred time of telling stories. It is a 
sacred time of truth talk. It is a sacred time for listening. We are creating stories at this very moment. <laughs> Leadership is about listening, listening deeply, empathizing, and responding with humility, and a willingness to radically relearn, and to say thank you. Scarcity and trauma ask us to forget how to thrive, so that the colonizer's attempts at realizing manifest destiny will be fulfilled. Disconnecting bodies from ancestral place and the intellectual erasure of contributions and connections made. Our ancestors inspire us to hold self both accountable and responsible outside of the punitive systems that dehumanizes and dominates BIPOC bodies, minds, and spirits. It is our commitment to abundant healing and community action that inspires us to not only lift our voices, but to listen, think critically, and to uplift others as we, that we see and hear. Fierce love inspires us to name the atrocity of police brutality. Fierce love calls us to oppose systems of oppression that, that were designed to inflict violence. Protectors of family, community, and all relations, we put our bodies on the line for the survival and thrivance of the next generation. Indigenous solidarity for black liberation is about recognizing that indigenous sovereignty is not possible without black liberation. We'll show up for each other with the strength and resilience passed down to us from our ancestors. Black lives matter. Black trans lives la matter. <laughs> We decided to bring these women up to show the various faces and how Native women present. We don't all fit the stereotype, but we all carry our culture in our heart and we are very, very thankful and grateful that we were invited to share that with you this evening. Thank you to the organizers and we're gonna invite our next speaker up. Thank you. I have a very special guest that I have invited tonight. As Native people, we uphold our elders. We respect them. They're our teachers, they're our guides. They are linked to our ancestors. We wouldn't be doing the right thing if we didn't have an elder voice. And it's very difficult to have that voice right now because our elders need to keep safe from this virus that is plaguing the globe. We have an elder here tonight that was willing to come and speak to you. Her name is Linda Mianis. She is a survivor of boarding schools. She is a survivor of losing Celilo Falls, which is where she grew up and where she fished and where she, her family gathered sustenance and nourishment since time immemorial and that that was taken away from them in the name of colonization, in the name of cultural genocide. I'm very, very honored to bring her up to the mic this evening. Please welcome her. Eow, Inoshwanisha, Lamushku, Siakoni, Linda, Ni Klawit. What I said was, my my Indian name is Lamush, which I'm named after my grandmother, and my English name is Linda. Um, I said good evening, and I hope everybody enjoyed themselves today. Uh, I sure did. I didn't expect to be doing this. Our Black Lives Matter. <laughs> um, thank you, Laura, for that introduction. Um, when she asked me to talk, I wasn't sure what I was supposed to say, but I always speak from the heart, so this is what I'm going to do. Um, I've been you know, like everybody talks about Catholic school, foster care, 
public school being bullied. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, boarding school was very hard, but it wasn't as hard as my my great grandmother and my grandmother, my uncle, my dad, my mother. A lot of our older ones have, have really suffered from this boarding school error. Not as bad as, we didn't have it as bad as they are, but it's a reminder of who we are and how proud we should be, no matter what the situation is. But you know, with everything going on, I was reminded when I watched the news about the protests downtown, because it triggered me because I went to Standing Rock. And it's, it was sad to see what was going on because seeing those guys with the National Guard coming down with their guns, and here we are just being peaceful people, trying to protect the water, trying to protect the land, protecting what belongs to the people, you know, and sharing that knowledge and wisdom that we have, we try to pass it on to our younger generation before we lose it all. The greatest loss that I have remembered is our language. We all spoke our language, but then we were taught forcibly to speak English. So I think I do pretty good with the English. Yeah. So, um, but as, I, as a great-great-grandmother, I always try to teach my grandkids the importance of being proud of who you are, where you come from. Don't forget to learn from your grandmother the teachings. You know, you know, I know this technology gets in the way of things, but sometimes there's the culture, there's the dancing, there's the uh, beadwork, there's, you know, I'm a berry picker, I'm a root digger, I'm a traditional dancer. Um, I do all of these things to carry on our way of life because it's already been taken away, a majority of what's left. And so with everything that we have, we want to share, you know, because we want to know, we want you to know that we are proud people and that as part of what's going on with us, we, we love being part of who you are, and that is Black Lives Matter. My name is Tana Sanchez. I'm the state representative for House District 43 in North and Northeast Portland and only the second Native American to ever serve in the Oregon legislature. That says something, doesn't it? About long-term embedded oppression and racism in this country and in particular in this state. And you can guarantee, I can guarantee you that those few essentially 10% of us who are people of color in the Oregon legislature know that very, very well, because we battle it every single day. And we're trying really, really hard to move a lot of things in the best possible way, but you would have no idea how hard it is in that system, because we are battling something that, that has been bastardized in, like, in an amazing way. The structure of, of, uh, of our government system actually came from the Six Nations Iroquois Confederacy but they bastardized it and beat it up and caught, put a lot of money in it and made it really, really difficult. But that doesn't mean we're gonna give up. And it doesn't mean that we're gonna stop fighting for what's right and what's necessary and for what needs to shift. So I also wanted to, I was actually had a lot longer to talk, but now I'm gonna cut down really tight. But I wanna tell you something really, really important. In the late 60s, when the Black Panther movement came alive, and started moving things for, for black folks, the American Indian Movement came alive at the same time. We traded back and forth the different concepts and ideas and, and, and patterns of how we would do things. And we worked together on a lot of different levels to take care of our people and feed our people. And we have shifted the way our, all of our communities have been treated since then. But if I look back at the 10 points 
measurements and, and the different things that, that we put it through forth as the, in the American Indian Movement and some of the takeovers that we did, not much has changed, but a lot has changed at the same time. And what we know, though, is that as people of color, in particular black and indigenous people, we are interconnected. We're not only interconnected in our struggles, but we're interconnected in our DNA. We know very well that we are all a part of this land now, and we protected you and you protected us. So we need to stand together on that level and recognize that whatever it is, whatever our struggles may be, we have to be interdependent. That's a, there's a big difference between interdependent and codependent. We need to be interdependent as, as communities so that we can fight this thing together, so that we can battle this out together, and that we can support the many people who are standing up and speaking out, like all of these young people who spoke today. That's where we need to move to. And I want to read you one little thing here. Back in the late 60s, when the Black Panther movement and the American Indian movement were coming alive, FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover declared that the Black Panther movement was a threat to national security. In August of 1967, he issued an internal memorandum directing the FBI's counterintelligence to expose, disrupt, misdirect, discredit, or otherwise neutralize the party. Now I want you to hear those words again. Expose, disrupt, misdirect, discredit, and otherwise neutralize. So there, is, there was an effort going on then, there is an effort going on now. Do not buy into the violence. Do not buy, buy into the oppression that's happening on other people, and don't allow it. We have to speak up, we have to say things, we have to own it when it's necessary for ourselves and push it out when it's not. Move forward, people, but do it with, with the, the grace of our ancestors and the things that we need to do to make this different. We can do it. Thank you.